Uh, welcome to Cabinet, first Cabinet back uh, um, after a, a, quite a, a summer break. Can I uh, welcome everybody here uh, today and anybody at home who may be watching in or will do in the future. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, my colleagues, or rather they can introduce themselves. Firstly though, I'm Peter Fox, leader of the Council. Can I... Uh... Phil Murphy, Cabinet Member for Resources. Uh, Brian Jones, Cabinet Member for County Operations. Paul Jordan, Cabinet Member for Governance. Bob Greenland, Deputy Leader, uh, Responsibility for Enterprise. Richard John, Cabinet Member for Children and Young People. Penny Jones, Cabinet Member for Social Services, Health and Safeguarding. Um, we have uh, Sarah Jones, who's, who's Skyping in, Cabinet Member for Social Justice and Community Development. Welcome, Sarah. Hi. Uh, hi. And uh, Dimitri, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, Dimitri Trudy of the Labour Group. Yeah. Thank you, Dimitri. Um, can I also today uh, welcome Matt Phillips? Our new monitoring officer, or is that the right, correct terminology? No, is it head of legal? What I can't remember. Head of law and monitoring. How about law and monitoring? I say, well, welcome, welcome back to your first uh, cabinet. Uh, um, uh, looking forward to working with you as we all are. Uh, for many years to come. So, okay, um, apologies for absence. Uh, we, we have apologies from Debbie Blakeborough. Um, I'm not sure if we've had the apologies from um, uh, Councillor Watkins. Okay, so uh, declarations of interest, please. Uh, yes, uh, Leader, I've got a um, personal interest in one of the items on the Welsh Church Fund, the uh, St Mary's Church Fund we described. So uh, I, I just want to vote. Okay, can you fill in the appropriate performer yeah. afterwards, Richard? Um, I wanted to make the point, I don't think it's a personal or, or prejudicial interest, but under item one, the childcare scheme, I wanted to make the point that I'm a father of two children who are not currently eligible for the scheme. Okay. Um, yeah. um, uh, remiss me to uh, welcome uh, Councillor Val Smith, our, our stand-in uh, guest um, or visitor, and uh, welcome all officers. Please, officers, if you uh, uh, do participate during the uh, afternoon, could you just uh, say who you are? Okay, um, so we've done uh, declarations. Okay, that leads us straight on then into the first uh, report that Richard just alluded to, and that's the 30 hour free childcare offer. Thank you very much, Lita. Well, I'm really pleased to be able to bring this report forward today. Um, we know that costs of childcare are, are eye watering nationwide, that childcare costs can be a significant barrier to, to returning to work for many, for many parents of young children and that they can also put, place a significant burden on, on household incomes, particularly in, in Monmouthshire. So we're really pleased that we've been able to bring this scheme, this scheme forward. Um, all parties had proposals in the last Assembly elections to improve the package of childcare on offer to parents of young children. Um, and we're really pleased to be able to take part in this, in this Welsh Government scheme. Um, Welsh Government have made a clear commitment that they're going to be implementing 30 hours of free childcare across Wales by September 2020. We've been lobbying the Welsh Government quite hard that we want to be an early implementer of this scheme. So we're very pleased that they've agreed that we can now implement this in January 2019, so 18 months early, uh, 18 months earlier than, than um, we would have done otherwise. So really pleased to be implementing this early. It's going to be available to parents who work a minimum of 16 hours a week. It'll be 30 hours of, uh, of free childcare for three and four year olds for 48 weeks of the year. We know that in the last few years, Wales has had the least generous childcare offer for parents of young children. Uh, a number of years ago, 30 hours free childcare was introduced in England. And as a, as a county very close to the border, and we know that Blyna Gwent has been an early implementer as well, uh, we've had real concerns that we didn't want parents in Monmouthshire to, to be losing out. Um, I'm pleased to hear that the, the way that Welsh Government are implementing this scheme is different to the 10 hours that has been on, on offer in recent years. The 10 hours free childcare has been quite prescriptive. Um, parents were limited to taking a maximum of two hours free childcare a day. So if you imagine if you were um, a parent working part time, say you work 16 hours a week, uh, 16 hours will entitle you to, to a certain number of benefits. Unless you spread those 16 hours right across five days of the week, you would not be able to take your full entitlement of 10 hours free childcare. 
which seems ridiculous. Um, it, it was um, not a very sensible way to, to run it. So really pleased that um, the 30 hours is not going to be as prescriptive um, as, as, as it was previously. We know that we've got adequate, we, we feel confident we've got adequate provision across the county. We've got surplus places in many of our nurseries. And I'm also really pleased that we're introducing this countywide. A number of local authorities introduced 30 hours or piloted 30 hours free childcare on a ward by ward basis. I feel that's quite unfair to think that families in in one ward could get 30 hours free childcare and um, it makes a significant uh, difference to, to families if they were paying that full that full entitlement um, if they were making those full payments just because they lived say perhaps the wrong side of, of a road yeah. um, and that uh, families in, in another ward could get a completely different package so this is a really positive news story I'm really glad we're implementing this early and I'm hopeful that uh, we can do all we can to raise awareness of this scheme so that all those entitled uh, to 30 hours free childcare in Monmouthshire can take it up and that this will make a real difference to working families in this county. Okay. Yeah, thank you Richard and, and, and really good news and I think uh, I'm, I'm sure communications will be uh, uh, right behind this to uh, make sure we do get that message out. I think that's really important and it's just such an, uh, such an enabler and something which is really cried out for in, in, in the likes of, uh, of Monmouthshire. So, so well done all involved in, 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 in committing Wales Government to allow us to move forward early. That's a, a, a big a big plus for many, and will be a big plus for many, many uh, people. Like colleagues, anybody wish to add? Yes, uh, any? I, I'd just like to say that I support this uh, this recommendation to, um, you know, to join all uh, neighbouring authorities and to work in partnership with Newport City Council and to deliver this, um, to implement this Welsh Government initiative. It will certainly have a positive impact. Yeah. I think it's the way forward. Yes, Sarah, can I invite you in? I know you wanted to speak on this. Hi, Sarah, did you hear me? Hi. Yeah. Yes, thanks, Leader. Um, yeah, no, just to, to welcome this. I mean, it's a very positive move and it, it, it pursues the um, opportunities that are over the border where we've already got the 30 hour free childcare since 2015. So um, good news. But I just wanted to check in terms of this is a pilot project because it's actually going through as a bill now, isn't it, through the Assembly. So that's only at stage one of the legislative process. Are we going to be following that quite closely? Because I know a number of recommendations have come forward from the Assembly Committee that's looking at this bill, um, such as extending this to families that aren't working but are looking to get into work, for example, and allowing them to, to take advantage of the offer. So just trying to understand how this sits alongside the bill process itself. That's, uh, yeah, that's a really interesting way. Anybody got any reflections on that? Uh, Will or Sue? Sue, yes. Um, Sue Wally, yes, manager. Um, my understanding is this, they're not calling it a pilot because they're committed that this is definitely going to happen, which is why they call it early implementation. What they have said is they may well tweak it along the, along the way. So to learn from these initial stages, if they feel they need to reduce perhaps the upper limit is some things they're talking about or, you know, there may be changes along the way. They, they're hoping to learn from these early implementation. Um, to sort of tweak it as they go yeah. along, but it definitely is going to be going so, forward. So the bill won't, the bill can't stop its passage, and then all this is off the cards. That's my understanding. Right, Sarah, do you want to come back? No, that's that's great. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, colleagues, anybody else? All right, really good, a really good news. So, Sue, is there anything else you want to add? Um. No, I don't think so. I mean, it obviously is really positive. We've already had numerous inquiries yeah. from parents, so um, we're hoping to get up and running smoothly for, for January. And all all um, settings, some you know, private, uh, as long as they're approved settings, can uh, have access to it's, offering. It's not just approved settings; it's any registered childcare providers. That might be childminders, right. okay. any childcare providers registered with CIW, or indeed registered with um, Ofsted across the border because they can access their childcare in England if they choose, which is different to the English offer. Yeah. But for us, that's a really positive um, addition, really, because we have a number of parents that use childcare across the border. And we uh, feel we have enough, I think you said, Rich, enough capacity then across the county for the likely, will there be quite a, a likely 
uh, an increase in uptake of one. It's uh, very so. difficult to know. I think in Monmouthshire it will probably be less of an, an impact because we've actually already got a lot of families accessing childcare. It's just they're struggling to pay for it at the moment. Mm. Um, whereas in other authorities, I think perhaps they, they're going to have struggle with that a lot more. There is a capital grant that childcare offer that we're currently um, looking to put a, a bid in for so that we can look at the areas where we think we might struggle and look to put additional uh, buildings in place and then get providers in. To... So, so I suppose there is also, this is great news, but it's also a business opportunity Absolutely. for, for, for some. Yeah. OK, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Sue. Anybody else? Anybody? No? OK, right. So I'll move us straight to the recommendations. We look forward to, uh, to seeing this roll out now, January, you say. And, and so we need a, a, a fair effort to make sure everybody knows about this. I'm sure it'll be a, a lot of publicity around it. So the recommendations are then in 2-1 to work in partnership with Newport City Council to deliver the 30-hour free childcare. Oh, yeah, let's touch on that a minute. Newport, uh, why uh, Newport City Council? Newport, Newport City Council are... Uh, Oh, uh, administering this on my behalf or what? Yes, um, the Welsh Government have gone down the route of what they call engagement authorities and delivery authorities. Um, and so it was a Welsh Government decision that Newport would deliver the offer on behalf of Monmouthshire. Right. So we will still be responsible, obviously, for ensuring there is sufficient okay. child care, but they will deal with the actual payments. For okay, the they'll deal with the administration. Yeah. With. Fine, fine, great. Okay, so to one then to work in partnership with Newport City Council to deliver 30 hour free childcare offer from January 19, to two to roll out the childcare offer in all areas of Monmouthshire simultaneously, and two three to agree the suggested changes to the staffing structure within the early years team in reflection to the child care offer. Are we all in favour of that? Yes, we are. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. And anybody else who's come in to support that one? Okay. Okay, next next report then is the Welsh Government targeted regeneration investment programme. Colleagues, you, you would have received a uh, uh, a late um, amended uh, copy of this report uh, last night, which it, it, there's some uh, subtle changes uh, within the recommendations, um, but we can uh, clarify those um, uh, a little later. Kath Fallon, the author of the report, is here with us. Um, but uh, this uh, report then is to consider the approval of the Cardiff Capital Region Regeneration Plan, from two, which covers 2018 to 2021. It also sets out the objectives of the Cardiff Capital Region and the target areas and scope of activities that are uh, expected under the Welsh Government's targeted Regeneration Investment Programme, the TRI uh, programme. And uh, within the report, you'll see the specific focus also on the Monmouthshire um, part of of, of the uh, of, of what's contained uh, within uh, the uh, plan. The the plan, as uh, I mentioned, covers 2018 to 21. It outlines the target areas, the governance arrangements, the, the various them the thematic grant schemes, and scope of activities. That are possible under the the program. Programs around forty four million pounds been allocated to South East Wales, um, with a maximum grant of seventy percent from Wales government, and then obviously match funded uh, accordingly by uh, by the uh, authorities. Any other project funding, as you'll see in three one, um, is available with a maximum uh, grant of fifty percent. Uh, Welsh government requires economic regions to work collaboratively to produce a regional plan uh, for delivery. Um, the uh, TRI will seek to support projects that promote economic regeneration. Uh, they create jobs, um, enhancing skills and employability and the right environment for businesses to flourish within. And uh, with the focus on individuals and areas most in need to ensure that prosperity is spread across all parts of, of Wales. Um, to maximise the impact of Wales Government uh, TRI funding, interventions will be targeted in key locations across the region that have been chosen because of their socio-economic uh, profile. In the case of Monmouthshire, there is an economic imperative to unlock the new opportunities in the South East Severside area. 
Um, and obviously, there's so many things happening in the areas, as you see in the report, you know, they were reminded that the, the seven bridge tolls are likely to be going shortly. We know that uh, we're located in that corner of Wales, closely to the M4 corridor. Uh, we're strategically placed in uh, closely to, to the likes of uh, Bristol and uh, other key, uh, you know, um, uh, evolving areas uh, in the UK. So we, we're really placed uh, very well as a as a as a seven side area um, um, within that uh, economic uh, within the economic uh, region. Uh, however, uh, the town uh, of Caldercott specifically is um, is is not you know is not as active as we would wish. Um, its its offer um, is not of the right quality to meet the future needs from retail of food to drink, housing, enterprise, and from all activities. So, you know, there is a need for us to, to make the best of the opportunities which could flow uh, from the TRO funding in the area and obviously enhance the, uh, the, the wider region. So if we look at specifically at the town of, uh, of Caldercott, um, you know, as I touched on, it's, it's you've got the potential of being a major beneficiary of whatever it happens in, in it positively happens in, in the area. Um, the, uh, sp the proposed strategic schemes that uh, uh, that are being looked at, you'll see in 3.5 there, um, the cross, the cross, as in the cross, those of you who know Caldercott, the cross destination space, which is to enhance mobility and ex accessibility for the residents, visitors, and employees through investment in that shared uh, space. Um, there's also the, the, uh, the enhanced link of Church Road from that space through to the castle and everything on offer in the country park and, uh, and adjoining opportunities as well around equestrian and, uh, and various things like that. There is the uh, refurbishment of the existing retail parade. Uh, the offer there, you know, does need some something doing uh, with it to, to make it aesthetically uh, uh, far, far, far better. Um, there is the creation of, of uh, proposed free enterprise and co-working space within the uh, community hub um, and also to improve the housing offer. And it's suggested uh, around 27 um, residential units to be created around Jubilee Car. Jubilee Way car park, as you, you know, it, uh, obviously we, that would change the aspect of the, the rear of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, the town centre significant, significantly and, uh, and is very much in need uh, for, for, for that uh, there. Um, there is uh, under the thematic uh, activity in, in 3 uh, 6, there is also uh, an opportunity for us to uh, to uh, bid to the Urban Centre Property Enhancement Fund, um, which was, is proposed for uh, neighbouring retail and employment property as part of a wider strategic uh, uh, project. Uh, all of the schemes above will enable the council to maximise the opportunities that TRI can offer whilst offering the potential for the region to capitalise on the county's new opportunities. 3A outlines the governance that each, go each council would be responsible for its own partner engagement, project development, assessment, financial output monitoring, etc. And uh, we will report and the council will report back to that regional regeneration framework, which as you see is made up of regional regeneration directors who will in turn report back to the Cardiff Capital Region Cabinet on spend and delivery. Uh, Wales government are seeking to, uh, for a single council, not yet to be, not yet determined to manage the administration of the Urban Centre Property Enhancement Fund. Um, I'm not sure when we'll hear, uh, hear who's likely to, to have uh, all of that. The options appraisal section in the report just really outlines what we've heard several times around what the city deal was all about and what it's aspiring uh, to do. Uh, 44 4 reflects on the stakeholder engagement to date and that's been a, a pretty thorough uh, exercise and thanks to all people who've been involved with this. Uh, a six month programme of engagement activity took place between, in Coldcock between September uh, 2017 and March this year which in, involved three stakeholder workshops, members of uh, Caldercott, with members of Caldercott Town Council, the town team and uh, local county councillors um, along with uh, officers 
Um, there has been um, drop-in um, um, activities as well for the wider uh, community. And I think it's fair to say that the wider community and all of those people have helped contribute to shape the offer which we're looking to bring forward under the city region plan for the Caldercott uh, uh, area. Um, next steps then, so uh, once the regeneration plan has been approved by all local uh, authorities and when you go through that report you'll see there's specific themed um, um, options around all areas of the region where they have those similar problems or opportunities or, 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 or you know, things which align to the, 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 the expectations of Wales Government. So you'll see those options all the way through there. Hopefully then 10 authorities will, um, will uh, consider that and approve the report and then it will be formally considered by Wales Government and hopefully endorsed by ministers for their approval. You'll see the costs then, the, uh, the potential of this scheme is a, an investment of probably 10 million pounds within the uh, seven side area, predominantly around the, the Caldecott town. Um, and uh, you'll see that today that uh, officers are asking for us to, um, to submit a project development uh, application for around 147,000 pounds, 50% of that to be match funded um, to go toward um, the, uh, the, the what was outlined earlier um, in the report under the uh, under that um, under that urban centre property announcement fund. So the uh, the recommendations then are slightly amended from the original report which came round. Uh, I think it removes a reference to the uh, cross uh, um, the uh, what we call it the cross destination space and then obviously amended application amount for the for the the, the fund I was just talking to. So um, so colleagues, I'll open it up there before I take us through the recommendations. Or oh, Kath, is there anything you want to add? I probably missed something. I'm bound to miss quite a bit. Okay, right. Well, yeah, if I can, I first of all thank Kath for the initiative of taking this forward. A really important piece of work taking this forward for uh, Caldecott. In the past, we have um, ensured that the footfall goes through the, um, the, the area of Caldecott through the development of the Asda store. But you have to have an offer which is within the town centre to draw those people who are existing, you know, who are going to ASDA into the town centre. And we clearly haven't got that at the moment. So this programme, uh, I think, will, will make a huge difference to, um, to Gardecott. But I think the summer months have shown us that the uh, face of retailing right throughout the UK is changing. And I think we need to be alive to those changes. We need to be alive to the pressures uh, and we need to think about a strategy for our town centres moving forward. And I think within here, we can see some of the answers. I think we need to bring back housing into our town centres. Uh, we've got a lot of space. If you look at the upper spaces within most of our town centres, not used. Um, many, many areas which are quite empty. And yet we've got shops closing down. Do we need as much space under our planning that is simply put to, um, to retail space? We need to reconsider the sort of spaces we need for pure retail. We need to look at what people will go into town centres for. They won't be going in the future to buy convenience foods um, and to buy convenience products. Um, they can get that online much cheaper. But they, there is a need for people to, to go into town centres for community activities. Uh, um, and I think we need to think very carefully about the future for our town centres. This project, taking this forward, will give us good opportunity uh, to see what will work and what won't work um, as we move forward. And then I would like to see us moving forward uh, in our other towns throughout the uh, county. Some are doing pretty well, uh, others, you've only just got to look down the road here at us and you see all sorts of problems in a very small town. So we, we uh, I would very much welcome this uh, and look forward to taking um, uh, the project of town centres forward throughout the county. Yeah, thanks, thank you, Bob, absolutely. Yeah. So, sorry, you want to come in? 
Um, yes, please. Um, yeah, again, I echo the points that, that Bob's made. Um, it's really important that we take advantage of this fund. I know that under the previous round of strategic funding under the Vibrant and Viable Places, um, we were one of only three authorities that didn't get any grant funding, despite a really good bid that we put in for Abergavenny at that time. Um, so it's really important we capitalise on this. Um, just a couple of specific questions, if I may, um, it's mostly around feedback, actually. So it's just really to understand, particularly maybe from Kath, um, the feedback that's particularly with the recent feedback from the resident engagement um, around the plans that are being proposed. And then more widely on the, the wider piece, the strategy itself, what engagement has taken place with bus the business community and those stakeholder groups, people like the CBI, the FSB? Um, I'm just keen that obviously we can't see this as an inward piece of, um, of work. We have to be looking at the stakeholder groups that are going to be affected as well as the, the usual suspects that we might engage with. So um, it's just really to try and understand what level of engagement's happened more widely around the, the, the broader strategy itself. Yeah, thank you. Really, really salient points. Yeah, Kath, do you want to come in there? Yes, of course. Um, in terms of the actual um, exhibition that we had in the community hub in Caldecourt, we had, um, it was there for just over two months, open to all. We had over 50 responses um, and half of those were very supportive. Um, 16 were neutral, 11 were negative. Some of those negatives were around really um, in terms of the potential for the residential scheme on Jubilee Way, which is part of a car park. Um, and so we've addressed that through developing a parking, a parking strategy as, as part of the project development fund application that's going forward. In terms of the wider stakeholder piece, I'd say there's still further work to be done. Um, certainly we don't feel this is the end of consultation and certainly we're meeting with with um, local county councillors uh, tomorrow morning to go through things in more detail. All of the schemes have, however, been discussed with them and had an opportunity to develop proposals as we've gone forward, particularly with business members who've been part of those stakeholder groups. But uh, as far as we're concerned, we've still got a lot more work to do because clearly these are outlined proposals at the moment and we need to go into far more detail in order to go, to go through the planning, etc. and other issues that we'll need to do with along the way. Okay. Yeah, uh, thanks, Kath. I notice on the uh, fruited report is still damaged confidential and draft. I was just because it was an old draft, was it? So it's it's it's, okay. it's obviously okay now. <laughs> in, the, in terms of the residential, yes. Yeah. No, no. Just in through the whole report, it's got confidential in watermarks across it. That's <laughs> 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 right. Fair enough. Uh, the, the other point then look, on that wider strategic engagement. It's a good point, Sarah, because I'm not sure if the uh, uh, the um, the Capital Region business organisation have actually discussed it yet if it's been before them and, uh, and and I know that the Economic Growth Partnership I don't think has yet because I would have been at them um, but we have a, a, a meeting now all day meeting next week which may feature uh, within within the agenda there but it is it very clearly uh, yeah, does need that input um, we know that there are very specific um, um, packages right away through the region to specific areas of socio-economic need and um, so they're all a little bit individual for each each person yes. but they should all come together for the collective good of the region so yes. um, you're quite right Sarah that you know the wider business community uh, need to have a, a significant input about that because I think it relates very clearly to what Bob just said so what is the future offer look like in the town is it the what we've always experienced or is it a different sort of uh, experience that people come to the town for it's not just shopping um, how do we make it a, a vibrant place that people want to stay for a while spend money not just on on on, on shops but on on the social side of things so you know i think it's important how the the change in nature of retail is happening and the business community obviously other people who are going to be hopefully at the forefront of what that might look like absolutely yeah, particularly in terms of future direction of town centers and they become more leisure destinations as opposed to shopping destinations mm. however that could change again once we get more housing within our town centers so i think they're going to be constantly evolving it's also an opportunity for retailers to understand the impact of the online market and how they adapt accordingly yeah. um, and the fact that independence is still sort of very strong but also there's then the issue that bob and i deal with it on a daily basis in terms of the impact of the business rates yeah. That going forward. yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Colleagues, yep, Phil. I think it's important too that we pick up the uh, the residential side. Um, 
Uh, one of the landlords put in a planning application which went through yesterday with regards to taking out some unused office space and uh, and and that's going to be turned in in the flat so the more we can do to to create a, a, a residential hub within the town center the more vibrant it's going to be um, and probably the the, the, the more um, secure it can be Caldicott does suffer from um, unfortunate activity during the uh, night because there's nobody about there um, so clearly uh, we've got to do a lot to do with um, with working out just what does need to uh, be there clearly just talking up the uh, shops and hoping somebody will come there it's not going to be the the answer so uh, yes we need to be very careful about uh, where we're going on this one okay anybody else Okay, let's move some progress. So thanks ever so much, Kath. Um, um, really look forward to uh, cracking this through. It's a really exciting opportunity for Caldecott. Uh, gosh, so, I mean, we've made some big steps forward with ASDA coming there. And we know the footfall, the benefit of that footfall hasn't been felt totally yet. But hopefully, linked with this, we'll see some massive benefit. I remember back when we were talking about the, the Four Towns Initiative, there was always a, a strong voice from Caldecott area saying, well, why isn't it, why doesn't it pick up, why didn't it have a five town? Because it was in those days, Caldecott wasn't seen as the town. <laughs> it's, it's still talked of as the village, you know, and um, that's got to change with the population of 20,000 within the area, you know, it very much can uh, be a town. Um, uh, so hopefully we're going to make some steps toward that. So recommendations then, I, uh, I'll kind of work, work through these. Um, so 2-1, the, the Cabinet approves the final draft of the Cardiff Capital Region Regeneration Plan, um, specifically the regeneration proposals for South East Sevenside, circa of £10 million following submission to Welsh Government in order to facilitate delivery of the Welsh Government's targeted regeneration investment programme. To two, the Cabinet agrees the submission of a project development funding application, a circa £147,000 to support the delivery of the wider regeneration proposal. To three, that the Cabinet approves the assorted associated spend from within the current medium-term financial plan using section 106 monies and in-kind staff time as match funding 50 percent requirement for the project development funding application this will facilitate the delivery of the project de development activity as per spend profile identified in appendix b 2-4 then finally that the authority is granted to enable officers to further develop Monmouthshire's proposals with a view of bringing forward additional schemes to cabinet for further consideration and funding at the point of readiness. Are we all in favour of those? Thank you very much. Excellent. Great. Thanks Kat. Thank you. Okay, um, right let's go back to them. And that's the uh, right. Um, yes. Oh, and has this next report uh, is, is been deferred? Has it? Uh, yes, it, it has, has been deferred. So the right delivering excellence in children's yeah. services has been deferred for the time being, um, and that will be back with us, I'm sure, quite shortly. Okay. So we'll go on then to the responses to the exercise for the ALN review and next uh, steps. Okay, Richard. Thank you very much. Uh, so you may recall at Cabinet in March, we approved the start of a consultation into how we best meet the needs of, how we best meet the educational needs of our most vulnerable learners, and how we also ensure we meet the needs of the majority of learners as close to home as possible. So we launched that consultation on the 16th of April. It ran until the 27th of May. We published a consultation document, which is under Appendix 1 attached to today's papers. And we set out four different options, but also declared a preferred option, which was to establish a new special school on the site of Mountain House, offering a full range of provision for children and young people with autistic spectrum disorder. Uh, we also set out um, how existing provision for young children and young people with additional learning needs would be redesignated and transferred to the new special school under the responsibility of that head teacher. Um, the facilities at Mountain House would also um, meet the needs of children and young people with social, emotional and behavioural difficulties, profound and multiple learning difficulties, and those 
those young people with severe learning difficulties. So we went through a consultation process with governors, with staff, with parents and public at, um, at seven, I think, of, of our schools. I attended a number of these sessions and um, we, we wanted to hear from those affected as to, as, as to the best way forward. And some of the themes that have come out of that consultation, we've had a number of positive uh, pieces of feedback, particularly in relation to the equity and provision through a single management structure, greater opportunities for children and young people to be educated locally, enhanced support for our schools and also early intervention. We've also had a number of concerns highlighted, particularly about travel distances within, within Monmouthshire and also about this specific proposal for mixed gender and full range of provision for, for children with autistic spectrum disorder and social, emotional and behavioural difficulties on the same site. So of course, that's a significant change in provision at Mountain House. Now, this report today, we propose to reconsult on a number of amendments to those original proposals, including capacity changes at a number of, of, of our schools at our uh, SNRBs, our special needs resource bases, um, as well as the proposals surrounding Mountain House as the costs of refurbishment are estimated to be around six million pounds. We're also proposing a number of changes to the management structure of those special needs resource bases. So through this report, we're looking to reconsult in the autumn term and uh, we'll feed back to Cabinet in due course. OK, uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, Will, would you like to come in and add anything at this point? Not at this point, thank you. OK. OK, so uh, I know it's been a, a thorough uh, process. Consultations on these things have to be, quite rightly, and they have to listen and uh, they have to take cognizance of what's brought forward. And I think this report shows that that's the case and that we will be reconsulting on some of the, uh, on, on the basis, on the back of some of those uh, challenges and uh, and some of the other information coming forward some of those you know the the the, the financials um certainly linked to to mountain house and makers need to look very clearly at those options uh, as well going forward so um colleagues anybody want to come in here i'm, I'm going to bring dimitri in uh, afterward dimitri's asked to, to raise some questions on this colleagues will do you want to come in no just just to reflect on that point around the consultation, um, it was a really thorough exercise and we did visit a significant number of schools. Um, we also um, engaged specifically with the children in those schools who have additional learning needs. Yeah. So specific sessions were held for them to gain their understanding um, and their concerns about how the changes would affect them. Um, I think the other thing just to say is that this is set against the backdrop of a new additional learning needs and tribunal act. That will have a very significant impact on the way in which we and our schools have to provide for children with additional learning needs. So I think at the moment where we are is that there are areas that we feel we can progress with confidence, but there are some areas where we do need to look again and we need to go back out for consultation uh, in this next autumn term. Yeah, okay. Anybody else want to come in there? Dimitri, you want to come in there? Yes, thank you. Um, it's about the consultation responses and finance in particular, and I'm just so I can get it in my head. Um, in the response on page 17 on finance, it says that um, in response about savings, how much savings this, this proposal would do, the council says that the proposed savings will come prim primarily, if not all of it, from out of county provision. Um, but then further on on page 20, I, I, was, I would presume a response from a parent. A parent raises the question, of will the county um, basically force children out who are placed out of county back into county? And the council says, no, we have no, we have no intention of doing this unless it's by parental preference. So where you're seeing this coming from if all the parents say they're staying out <coughs> because um, we've modelled it exactly on that basis. So we've modelled the financials of this proposition on the fact that no children, we, didn't, we wouldn't want to disrupt any child in one place in a special school or a special unit. Um, so we've modelled no children coming back. It's entirely modelled on what we know is within our schools and what our expectations are of future demand. So it's modelled into the future, that benefit. So we're not claiming that the full financial benefit would be realised in year one. Um, so that would take place over a period of time. So clearly, um, in the, when the whole model is up and running, um, as we expect it to be, there will be a significant <coughs> financial benefit. But we don't expect that financial benefit to be delivered in the first instance. 
So we're trying to, to look at our pipeline, as it were, of children with needs, we you know it currently, to negate the need for them to go externally. Um, there will be some immediate benefit for us, um, but we wouldn't look to bring anybody back in, from an out of county position. So, to, right. yeah, please. So, the 200,000 predicted to save next year mm -hmm. is all children predicted to need out of county provision for we'll next year to met. Who we be able to meet their needs in county? But they're coming on stream, they're not on stream yet, but they will be coming on stream yeah. for the whole next year. Yeah. Do you want to carry it a little bit about finance or anything? Do you, do you, that was it, you're all right. All right, okay, you're covered. Okay. Right, um, anybody else, uh, anything they wish to add? Obviously, this will be coming back to us. It will do. Um, yeah, okay. Right, so the recommendations, anything else? Sorry, sorry, sorry. 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 Just that in terms of the process, um, so we've undertaken the consultation, we're reporting back to you now the response to the consultation. Yeah. So now we'll publish where necessary staff to notice yeah. They are subject then to office, um, so people are, have the opportunity to object to those staff to notices. And then we'll come back to you in December yeah. with our final position and ask you for your absolute direction in terms of those actions. Okay, great. Thanks for the clarity on that. Um, the recommendations, obviously, as they're, as they're written in, in the report, they may not be quite so, so it's, people may not be able to follow them quite. So I think I'll probably, probably be as well for me to just take them out of the body of the report yeah. and just touch on, on the rec recommendations. And, uh, and well, I can take them. Um, I don't know, Richard, how do you want me to play it? Do you want to take, take, take them on block or rather I, I just uh, allude to them or did you want to allude to them um, on, you know, three? So if we start on, um, it's, it, it, I, I think when you read them in the recommendation, but it doesn't yeah. quite make, doesn't make sense, to be honest, is when you read them in from three, seven, seven. on, yeah, yeah. it makes sense. So, you know, so I, I don't want to read each one of these recommendations and the rationale for them. Um, but the recommendation in 3.7 is to publish the proposal as consulted on. And in 3.8, the, the recommendation is to publish the proposals with the following modification. There's a modification there um, as to recommend that the profound and multiple learning difficulties be removed from the proposal. Um, and um, that there is a further modification that is recommended that the the Pembroke needs special resource base is uh, reduced from 20 or no, is remain at 20 instead of the 24 and then it's recommend that there's a recommendation to significantly recast the proposal and consult on the uh, establishment of the of mountain house as the, the, the special uh, school um, there is then in 310 a recommendation is to abandon this proposal and maintain the status quo and that was the proposal for new special schools to be managed by the special needs resource base in uh, um, yeah proposal it, hang on get this right right will um for me um so that was the proposal that the new special school would manage the SRBs yeah. in local schools that's right yeah so right so that one's been abandoned yeah. okay <laughs> And, and that's that's all of them. That's all the recommendations. Are we are we happy with all that? I didn't want to read each one out. It'll be there for, for another half an hour. It's a long page. All in favour? Great. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank, thanks. Thank you. Okay, let's move on then to the uh, Youth Enterprise European Social Fund. Uh, Bob. Yeah. Thank you, Lena. Um, giving our young people of, of every ability really the best opportunities for employment um, into the future must be a priority for us and in the past using this european social fund uh, we have started two um, programs the inspire to achieve and the inspire to work programs um, and this came to us in march 2016 and in July 2017 for approval and we put a considerable amount of money into both of these schemes then and the purpose of them is in the end to ensure that um, we reduce the number of young people who are not in employment um, education or training needs and uh, you will see from the appendices that go with this report that this has in the past been a successful scheme. And what we're now are being asked, uh, leader, 
is that this could be extended beyond the original date to take us through to 2021 and 2022 for each of those schemes. I think that's right. Um, and the cases there and the amount of funding and the, where it comes from is also within the report. Uh, I think this has obviously now proved to be a, an extremely good scheme. Uh, and I think that, that this is something, Leader, that we should now um, give further funding to. Um, I, I don't really want to say anything more about, uh, about it. Um, but uh, we have um, uh, we have Louise Wills and Kat Fallon with us, and I'm sure they can answer more of the questions than I certainly can on this. So I just pass it over for comment to members. Thank you, thank you, Bob. And I know uh, Hannah would have presented this, but she's on leave uh, at the moment. I, I know we we did ask Hannah to um, we deferred this prior to because we wanted that little bit more. Uh, evaluation or deeper understanding of how these projects have worked and uh, thank you for supplying those uh, this this time that gives us some reassurance and uh, an evaluation of how, how well um, we're working sometimes it's difficult to know isn't it you invest your schemes are put together well meaning and you wonder just sometimes how would you monitor if they're really doing what they wanted to do but you're frightened to move them just in case they were uh, you know i mean you hope they were so sometimes you know that, that the understanding how to ev evaluate some of this stuff how many kids would have actually ended up going neat um you know um, but i think that additional information has ha helped us see uh, how thoroughly um the project is evaluated and monitored um so so we, we wish well the exposure actually to the council is is, is quite minimal um, it looks from big figures on the front, but it's quite minimal. Um, so, colleagues, anybody wish to add? Uh, Sarah, I know you want to come in. I don't know why I shout when yeah. I talk. Yes. No, it's not that far. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Sarah. Only really, only really briefly on this one um just to say i've got a lot of confidence in the team that are delivering on this with hannah and, and louise doing a great job um i just think the importance around this i mean it's absolutely key that we support our needs as part of our wider social justice work but um i think it's just key that we continue to have very effective monitoring and the we ensure that the reports that go back definitely go back to scrutiny. I know when I was chair of economy, we often received reports around um, the work we were doing in this area. So just to have the assurance that that continues to happen um, and we can have thorough evaluations of the programme as it develops. Yeah, yeah, thanks. So. Is, is it factored into the work programme on an annual basis or something yeah, for the selects? Yeah. Okay, good. Anybody else? No? Okay, so the recommendation is a nice and... Uh, one um, so that in in uh, in two that the cabinet considers and approves the request for additional match funding from the investor redesign uh, reserve for 2018-19 and base budget consideration from 2019-20 to 2022-23 for the inspire to achieve and inspire to work extension all in favor of that thank you very much thank you Louise. thank you Kath. Okay, um, and I'm, I'm really pleased now for the next report to um, to, to welcome uh, Councillor Jane Pratt, the uh, select chair of, uh, of Strong Communities, um, who have done uh, um, some significant work for us, um, and well, um, on behalf of the community, uh, to to challenge the uh, obstructions in the highway um, report. So I'm glad you're here today because you're going to present some of the findings of those report. But first, can I hand over to Brian to open up the uh, the report? Yes. Uh, thank you, Leader. A policy to manage obstructions in the highway, which includes a boards, displays, tables, chairs, etc., was approved by Cabinet in January 2018. Following representations from businesses, the introduction of the policies were suspended to further consultation in particular public meetings in Monmouth and Abergavenny, and subsequently to allow the Strong Community Select Committee the opportunity to receive the representations, uh, review the policy and make any recommendations considered appropriate to Cabinet. As the leader has already said, Councillor Jane Pratt, the chair of that committee is with us and I'd like to hand over to you. Yeah, thank, thank you, Brian. Yeah, thank please, you very much. please, Jane. Um, yeah, are you all right there, or do you want to come and join us at the table? No, you're, you're okay there, Brian. Thank you very much. Uh, that's what 
I just would like to give some background to this and um, initially this, um, this report came to my committee in September 2017 and it was recommended by the select committee that charges for a boards and for street furniture were not made. It went to the cabinet in January 2018 and because of the um, pressure on the council it was decided that um, a charge would be made which equated to £2,600 a year which would cover the administration of the scheme. So that was against my um, committee's recommendations. This policy has attracted much attention both nationally and locally and there was a huge reaction by, from the business community and from residents as well. In, especially in Monmouth and Abergavenny, and there was um, a very uh, well um, uh, publicised social media campaign. I received petitions, a petition signed by 2,700 people in Abergavenny and 3,000 in Monmouth, and you know it it was a huge reaction, and I became extremely concerned by the reaction and I did write to um, Councillor Jones, the portfolio holder and the deputy leader in early July um, with my um, great concerns. Meetings were held by highways in the main towns and they were very well attended and members also were able to um, visit both Mammoth and Abergavenny with Roger Hoggins so that we could see at first hand how the street furniture and the A board policy was working out. We decided to hold a special select committee because of the seriousness of the issue and the response from the community. And prior to that meeting being held, Councillor Greenland did announce that the charges would be dropped until a decision was made today following the special select committee. And the special select committee was very well attended by the business community and I think they welcome the chance to put their views across prior to the elected members making their recommendations. We have had probably an amazing summer. I think it's definitely the best summer we've had since 1976. It's been glorious and we do have a very special cafe culture in Monmouthshire, which we need to encourage because it's uh, we'll see it again this week at the food festival in Abergavenny, and it's something we need to treasure and really expand. So I think that the business community do look to us to put some structure in place, but obviously, as Councillor Greenland has um, already um, reminded us. The high street is under intense pressure at the moment. It's been a real shock, I think, to all of us to see that multiples, large national multiples, are saying that the footfall is down by 20% year on year. It is a rapid decline and it's happening much more quickly than any of us, I think, have envisaged. So I must convey, though, that during that meeting, members were shocked that Cabinet did ignore the Select Committee's recommendation to um, not apply charges. And I really would, I felt it was so important for me to come along today so that the strength of feeling could be conveyed. Um, we need to be supporting our business community, especially in the high street, in any way we can. And I totally agree with. Councillor Greenland when he says that we need to have um, you know, a proactive strategy so that we can support our businesses and ensure that they continue to be healthy and vibrant in the future. So I would really recommend to Cabinet that I, I won't read all of the recommendations. Um, they were all unanimous apart from the first one which um, was voted for um, five people, one against, but I would really impress upon Cabinet to accept these recommendations from my select committee and that we support businesses in any way, every way we can in the future. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Jane. Thanks for coming along. And you take our thanks back to the Select Committee for the work. Uh, and, uh, and whilst the Cabinet may not have taken on board uh, the recommendations, um, it, it, it was no slight on the on the committee at that time, and I can't remember the debates we had around that, but they wouldn't have been made uh, lightly. Um, and uh, yes, you see, at the end of the day, it was a very small amount, a couple of thousand, three thousand pounds. And I suppose at the time that felt that that was a, a fair shout to go toward the administration. There was no profit in this. It was covering the administration, but absolutely right, I think. And, uh, and we all agreed on, on reflection that uh, those charges were, 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 were uh, um, you know, we didn't need to, um, to to level those. And the recommendations we have in the report today I'm reflecting will reflect what your select committee has said and reflect what we've already said uh, informally as cabinet as, as, as well. Mind you, there is still going to be a charge for people who who um, break the rules, um, you know, um, and so hopefully as a spirit of working together, we can preserve all of those good things that, uh, that the, the businesses have said about the towns. And we agree with them, you know. I have 200 emails, I think, around the, um, the square in Abergav, any post office square, um, but I know why, because there was a big board in one of the clubs saying, please email uh, Councillor Fox to let him know your views. Um, you know, but uh, absolutely some really interesting views from people all over the world who were visiting Abergavenny and wanted to preserve um, the, 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 you know, that, that, that outdoor culture that uh, was, was growing in that area. So, um, yeah, so we, we, we recognise the, uh, the, the views and agree with the uh, views and yeah, with hindsight, uh, you know, yeah, we could have all done without, um, uh, without uh, the, this sort of trouble and also the, the businesses could have done without the anxiety of this as well. So we recognise that. Colleagues, off to yeah, just, just want to say uh, something. When we first considered this, uh, this was not some form of money making scheme no. because the council was short of money. It was more that to uh, uh, to implement this policy, uh, there would be a cost on the council, and we were simply seeking to uh, reimburse the council with those costs. Otherwise, they have to be found from elsewhere. And uh, we felt at the time that that was the right uh, thing to do. And I should actually also say that um, the figure of 2,600 is not a figure that I recognise. Certainly, it's not a figure that relates to, um, to, to the charge on a business. In fact, I think the very maximum charge that, would, that, that was going to be placed on a business was something uh, yeah. considerably I, less than that. I think that was the total the amount total. of that's money. Total amount yeah. of money yes, yeah. that, to the that's right. Well, it might have been 2-7. That's seven. right. So I think we need to make sure because as yeah. it, somebody might get the idea yeah, yeah, that we yeah, were yeah, thinking no, of charging no, 2,600 no, no, no. to a single business. Um, but when Councillor um, Brian Jones and I looked at it in July, uh, me particularly with my economic development hat, felt that this was not the time to incur any extra costs on retailers, that um, uh, they were under enough pressure at the moment from, the, um, from their rates and their rents and their decreasing footfall. Uh, and that is why we decided that um, in July to immediately withdraw that charge uh, and to leave it for this meet, meeting to um, to, to um, consider properly the uh, the permanent <coughs> removal of those charges. Thank you, Bob. Phil. Yeah, I think it's important to uh, remember too that the the rationale that we looked at during the budget setting process was to have a, a, a form of uh, regulation that would help to ensure that these. Um, uh, obstacles as they were seen by, uh, by the di disabled groups um, were uh, pro properly controlled and placed in, in such a yes. way that um, those visually impaired or those who, who needed um, uh, wheelchairs or whatever uh, were able to ne negotiate them successfully. And for that reason, the permit scheme will, will stay in place. The only thing that's happening is, is we will no longer be recovering the, um, the uh, uh, charge. Um, but um, again, I, you know, I, I know I'm repeating what's been said, but this was not done specifically to, 
to uh, raise money, the principle behind it was to make those areas safe for uh, people with with uh, various uh, disabilities. In fact, I, I think I, I, I was at the the, uh, the um, Access for All forum, which started this debate off. We had a presentation from Access for All from disability communities about the uh, the, the issues which were presented in some areas of uh, our county, um, and that's started us to take a more rigorous approach in, in this regard. Um, so for all that's been said, I absolutely agree with that. Uh, so, so the financial charge, and I think, yeah, the global amount which was going to be retrieved to cover the administration was really nearer 3,000. Yeah, it was only a small amount that would be charged on any uh, any individual, individual business. business yeah. Brian, is there anything you want to conclude with? I think do I anything? Okay, yeah. so I'll take us through the recommendations. I'll be very helpful. Oh, sorry, I, I was just going to say, as an out of any member, I'm pleased to see that we've listened to businesses and residents and we've reached a sensible compromise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and hopefully um, we can work very closely together and, uh, and, and administer this, uh, this, this scheme uh, in a way which you know, is in the spirit of, of, of what we're all trying to do. So the recommendations, and I will read them out so there is clarity. Um, so 2-1, the charges for permits for displays, tables, chairs um, be withdrawn that the charges arising from non-compliance with the permit scheme as de detailed within the existing policy will remain. 2.2, two, that the additional criteria be added to the policy to allow businesses to occupy an area greater than 18 square metres where this can be achieved without compromising safety or causing an unacceptable obstruction in the highway and upon receipt of a risk assessment from the applicant. 2.3, <coughs> that any request from a business to occupy an area greater than 18 square metres be approved by the county highways manager or head of service in consultation with a local member and cabinet member for operations. And finally, that this committee recommends to cabinet, well, this is your recommendation from um, cabinet, that the permit scheme for individual premises uh, as described within the existing policy, remain in place. So that's all the recommendations. Are we all in favour of those? Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Jane, once again. It's good to see, it's a really good good to see the chairs coming along to Cabinet and presenting their findings. I think that's something we should be encouraged um, to all select chairs, and I hope that, that is something which does happen. Okay, um, right, so we move on then to the uh, green infrastructure proposals for Caldercott. Um, Phil. Yes, thank you, Leader. And um, Mike uh, Moran's here. If anybody's got any questions about the use, utilization of the wild six passes, but the, the idea of this um, uh, um, uh, presentation is to uh, utilize the section 106 offsite balances from the as the, the development in Caldicott. Uh, and to include this funding plus additional grant funding in the capital budget for 18-19. So the recommendation is that um, we set up a capital budget of 57,000 uh, in that year uh, to fund the Cardigot Green Infrastructure Corridors project that, and that this be funded in part by a contribution of 27,000 from the 106 balances um, and a further contribution of 30,000 from the Welsh Government's Green Infrastructure Capital Fund. Um, this report relates to an important part of the regeneration of uh, Caldicott in, the, in the, the Infrastructure and Environmental Improvement Project, which is known as the Caldicott Green Infrastructure Corridors Project, is, um, it is enabled. Um, improvements will be carried out along uh, entrances and exits to Caldicott as a wider part or part of a wider scheme uh, of town centre improvements. Um, the aim of the project is to work with local groups and volunteers to engender uh, partnership and sustainability for the areas and it of course is part of the ongoing work to enhance Caldicott shopping centre which we were discussing uh, with the uh, TRI programme. So it is part of a much wider scheme, albeit that it will be carried out in isolation initially, while the TRI program uh, is um, is uh, proceeded with. Um, Cardigot's not only suffering from the decline in retail areas, 
which we were discussing earlier, but it's really not attractive to shoppers anymore, with most of the footfall going to Asda and Waitrose. So the aim of this is to attract more people into the area um, before the other work is done. Should be noticed that there will be no duplication here in that any work completed as a result of this initiative will not be affected by subsequent schemes. So um, this is a, a scheme which has been put together by all of the agencies that are working together to try and uh, improve Cardicot. Um, so, uh, you know, I think this is an essential part of the overall scheme. OK, thank, thank, thanks, Phil. And uh, you can see the uh, what's, what's um, been proposed uh, down, down uh, 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 below there. Um, uh, it's, it's obviously going to be uh, part of that uh, wider enhancement of the of, of the town, which is uh, is, is really welcome. Uh, Mike, Kath, want to add anything, or Mike, anybody want to add? Just uh... <coughs> yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, right. The recommendation is that a capital budget of fifty-seven thousand be created in two eighteen nineteen under the existing capital budget project code nine seven three seven zero to fund the Caldecott Green Infrastructure Corridors project, and that this is funded in part by a contribution of twenty-seven thousand from the section one hundred six balances held by the county council in respect of as the supermarket development uh, in Caldecott. Local walking and cycle uh, under the local walking and cycling element of that uh, 106 um, uh, agreement, and a further contribution of 30,000 from the Welsh Government's Green Infrastructure Capital Fund. Are all in favour of that? Great, thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Catherine. Okay, uh, on to an, another city deal report uh, from our chief executive. Uh, um, and the purpose of this report is to seek our approval uh, as the council to host the employment of a temporary funded post as part of the city deal uh, partnership. Um, the city deal program director that some of us will know um, has sought support from the city deal program board to recruit a HE lead advisor into the City Deal program management team. And due to the specific requirements included, um, the required skill set um, for this required skill set, the post will be seconded position from within Cardiff University for two and a half days a week. The agreement is for six months initially, and the specific requirements uh, uh, centre around the compound semiconductor program and the need for research um, um, presence in low level TRLs. Um, so uh, the, uh, uh, the opportunity specifically, which City Deal Office require a HE lead is the expansion of the compound semiconductor cluster and strength in places bid to UK uh, government. So basically, we've been asked as the we're the the, the, um, the partner in the in the region who hosts the uh, the, the HR function of of, um, of of staff, and as such, the secondment we have to approve the secondment. The costs of this um, um, post uh, flow directly from the. Cardiff Capital Region funding and uh, the funding finance side of the uh, city deal is managed by Cardiff City Council. Paul, is there anything which got to be added? Yeah, I think you've caught it, Melina. Um, I, I think Cabinet will remember that we, we've um, actually hosted the programme director for the, the Cardiff Capital Region City deal since its inception. Previously, uh, Sheila Day is now Kelly Boone. Um, this proposal um, is really born of, of Kelly started to shape up the programme office that, that supports the city deal to attack those areas that will make a fundamental difference to our economy and also to enable the city deal to access um, the significant sums of money in the UK which has started to come on stream to, to, to promote um, uh, the direction of, of the nation over the course of the next 10 years. That largely talks to industrial strategy, uh, so it largely talks to a Westminster, a Westminster agenda, uh, increasingly being taken forward by Innovation UK and UK RI, Innovate UK, I should have said, and UK RI. Um, whilst local government officers have many talents and abilities, um, 
we cannot uh, possibly know about things such as research, um, uh, certainly higher educational orientated research in the way that a practitioner would. Consequently, Kelly feels the need to have such a person in her office. If you're interested in my view, I agree with her. Um, this proposal, if you, you deem to support it, will not cost Monmouthshire a penny. Um, it will just continue to enact our hosting role that I think we'd be more than happy to take on there for the big end of three years. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks Paul. Yeah, we'll see s s several of these sorts of things going forward as other authorities are host, other parts of the organisation will pick up similar sorts of reports. Um, so the recommendations then, oh, does anybody want to add in here? Pretty straightforward. Right, recommendations then are to seek approval from Monmouthshire County Council to host a temporary fixed term contract of employment for an HE lead for the city deal program for a six month period from 1st of September this year. Uh, the nature of the contract will be via a secondment basis. The second recommendation to report this role to cabinet and seek approval for the employment of a post which is estimated with 30% on cost at £29,172 per annum. Employment costs fully reimbursed by Cardiff City Council, the accountable body for the City Deal Partnership. Are we all in favour of that? Great, thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Um, and final report today, and that's the uh, Welsh Church uh, Fund and uh, the purpose of this report is to make recommendations to the Cabinet on the schedule of applications to the Welsh Church Fund Working Group meeting uh, three of the 2018-19 financial year held on the 26th of July and the uh, schedule of um, applications considered is there at 2-1 and they are listed, uh, there's four of them in all um, Phil, you've declared the interest on the um, number, uh, four. number four. Um, I won't run through those. You can see them uh, um, there. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's okay. So we um, can I uh, anybody got anything they want to say on these? No. Okay. So I move them on block then. Okay. All in favour of that? Great. Thank you very much. And that brings us to the end of today's uh, cabinet meeting. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Sarah, for joining us from home. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all again shortly.